This is Dr. T and welcome to Clinical Medicine with Dr. T. So um, I'm on lunch now guys um, but I just thought I should share the good news with you. Um, remember on uh, I think it was Tuesday I did share with you about a patient that I saw a 14 year old who presented with a retention of urine um, so I want to give you feedback on that on that patient I would love to give you guys feedback on all the patients that I speak about here like the patient that I saw a feature I would love to give you feedback but sometimes it's, it's difficult because the patient sometimes the patient uh, is referred to um, our tertiary hospital and um, it becomes hard to to track what happened there is one that i tried to track but at the clinic um it wasn't clear who saw the patient and not having the patient so um it becomes difficult so yeah but with this one you know i've been thinking about this uh, 14 year old ever since the day i saw her it was a very very special patient um or she is a very special patient she, because of how she presented that atypical presentation of retention of urine like i said the main complaint was that she had been passing uh, urine for the past week uh, but i uh, but I, I examined her i found the that she had a distension of the bladder i did a pr and i found that she was having stools in the right arm heart stools took her for an x-ray and I found that she should be having like a massive stool, in, a stool impaction. And uh, my diagnosis was that she was having retention of urine secondary to constipation. And uh, like I said, I did examine her, like in terms of looking for other clues. I did um, an inspection of the, the vagina. I saw that she, she didn't have any signs of trauma. Um, remember kidneys can have protection of urine if they've got uh, some kind of uti because the burning maturation all those things can cause her to be reluctant to go to the bathroom and also if a child has been sexually assaulted it's going to be painful when they go and pee so they would want not to go and pee so but she didn't have any of those um like trauma trauma signs so but when I saw that she was having a massive stool infection on the x-ray, I put my money on that. I was like, okay, the students were with me. I was like, okay, guys, let's do an enema. So I, like I, I explained that I put about a, a, a thousand mils of water in the rectum um, to encourage her to go and pass stools and to also break those hard stools that were already inside um, then. So and also discharge on uh, on liquid paraffin um, for two weeks. So um, what is, yesterday I wanted to do a follow up and just find out how she's doing, but I didn't have a chance. But today, uh, that's the first thing I did when I went to the hospital today. When I got to the hospital today, when I got to the hospital today, that's the first thing that I did. That's the first thing that I did. Like, guys, I normally st I, I I speak I speak very fast and uh, yeah so it was not easy to get um uh, phone numbers because i could remember her name i remembered her name but not the same name so so i had to go to x-ray and look for an x-ray and see the same name there the same name didn't help i had to go back and look for a gp number like a hospital number eventually i got it and then i got the, the numbers and then i called and then the person that picked up the phone is the father and then I and then I, I introduced myself and then, and then I asked where is um, the patient, and then she said no she went to play with other kids. I was like oh okay, uh, and then I was like is the mother around? And then she said no. He said no the mother is around. And I asked to speak to the mother. And then the mother was like um and then I asked how is she doing? Oh no no no, she's fine she's fine fine, she's eating she's doing everything right now. I wanted to know what is everything. She was like. Okay, she is passing stools, she's passing urine. So if it, basically, so apparently what happened is that when they went home, they used a the text to get home. Immediately when she got home, she started uh, passing like large volumes of stools. 
and then in about 30 minutes after passing large volumes of stools she started passing urine as well so her problems i would like to think that they are sorted but then i was like okay they must come back again thursday i want to see the kitty again how she's doing and also i want to put her on um stool softeners for another two weeks again just to make make sure that it's a month and then just if it, this thing re recurs she might need to be investigated um she might need to be referred to specialists so but for now we're excited that the child is up and running and doing everything and playing and all of that um obviously i did speak to them about the issue of hydration taking a lot of water and also having fiber in their food so guys that's feedback on the patient that i saw i would love to do feedback on all the patients that i discussed with you but like i said it's not always possible so guys thank you bye